Hello everybody. So I got a cheap Chinese counter and uh, where in the world's the middle of the screen? There we go. Somewhere. <laughs> anyway, so I was talking to Mike last week and um, he pointed these out and I was curious. It's like, okay, I got to buy one to try it out. Um, and he got one too. And um, so I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to take a peek at it, see if I can't glean what's going on here. Um, you know, see how it works. See how well it works. Um, because me, I'm not really that much of a believer. But we'll we'll see. Maybe maybe this so will turn me into a believer. Anyway, so we got these wires that came with it. Um, you know, we've got clearly a signal side and a power side. We've got a D-pack regulator here, obviously a passive. Um, 7805, oh boy, that's going to be interesting. Um, that's already a bad omen. Um, you know, 7805 driving all this, all these LEDs. Yeah. So, uh, I got no manual, no nothing that came with this. And a, and a QR code. I suppose I should zap that QR code, see what it's about. Um, but I'll fire it up, see what it's about. But before I fire it up, see if I can't figure out what's going on here. So we got a eight pin package here that's got markings 506, 9410, MO8. I got no idea what that is. Um, then we've got a um, 74HC151, which is a uh, multiplexer of some kind, I think. I have to look it up. Um, and then a TM1639, which this one's sitting in between the display here. And some of the pins are going to the display, so that's clearly doing the business for driving the, the uh, LEDs. Um, so that's going to be the display driver. No microcontroller, but we got a header here, and this looks like it's probably meant for a pick kit. So, yeah. I think it's meant for a pick kit. <laughs> so, anyway, so there's probably a pick on here. Chinese love the picks. Um, they love, they love picks. So, um... Just wondering where it is. It's here. It's probably under there. I see the we got an oscillator. Take a torch here and take a look underneath the see if I can see under the bottoms of the displays. Um yeah, there he is. That's not a quad flat pack or a QFN or anything like that. It's just, just a dual inline. Looks like nine eighteen pins. Yeah, that's yeah, that's not a that's not a quad flat pack. It's just like an 18 pin. It's a little, a little, a little one, um, you know, like one of those. But um, so we got our um, uh, uh, crystal oscillator there. Or I'm not sure if that's temperature compensated. No, that's got to be voltage controlled. We got a pot next to it, so it's got to be voltage controlled. We also have these other pots, and I'm not really too sure what those are all about, but we probably have an amplifier here, preamp of some kind, so that's probably what that's for, uh, those pots. Um, and uh, we got some transistors and things like that. That's probably looks like a FET right there, so. Um, yeah, so we've got a, a pre-amplifier stage and so on and so forth. Um, so if I had to guess, having actually built frequency counters out of microcontrollers, um, you know, hence this, done it. Um, so this is going to be an amplifier to prescaler. Um, this is probably this multiplexer. I have no idea. I don't know why you would have a multiplexer. Um, the uh, voltage controlled crystal oscillator is going to be for stability. So it's, it, I'm guessing that we've got a decent time base on this, but for $10, I don't know how. Um, but they put the pot on there, so it's clearly adjustable. Um, you know, so the, hey, that's better than than nothing. That's probably better than most, actually. Um, we got our one. We got a tantalum right there. Um, you know, no biggie. Uh -huh, what the value of that is? Forty-seven. Maybe it's a four point seven or a forty-seven. I don't know. It's probably a four point seven. But anyway, 
And then we've got a display driver uh, and these displays. And 7805, which I don't, I'm not a believer uh, that this is actually going to be able to run for any sustained amount of time, uh, simply because that's going to get too hot. Um, and then we've got some tack switches here, so this must have some setup or something to that effect in it, or you could change the, um, uh, probably the gate time. So let's give it a go, power it up, see what happens. See if I can figure out what that is. That prescaler is probably a divide, it's probably like a divide by 80 or something like that. Um, you know, you can get them, you can get a lot of them in the divide by various frequent, uh, you know, uh, various amounts. So, you know, um, they're probably dividing it by a high number though. Uh, so let's see, this is, uh, let's just give this thing eight volts. I don't want it to get too hot. So there we go. Nope, not quite. Yeah, let's give this thing eight volts. All right. Doesn't look like it's a low dropout, but eight volts should do it, do the business. So it turns on. That's always a good sign. Um, and it counts. So that's also a good sign. So it's going to be getting off the air, whatever, from these two leads. Um, okay. So we got something. Let's give it a signal. See what happens. So I will give it a. 10 megahertz off of my uh, GPS discipline oscillator. So I know that's 10 and a whole bunch of zeros. More than this can display. And it does okay. That's actually not bad. Um, needs to probably stabilize a little bit, but um, that's, that's totally, totally workable. Um, now, as far as putting this in a CB, uh, yeah, probably could. Um, I don't know if we can program any offsets in it. We got tax switches. I, I don't have any manuals for this. It's just nothing. Just this is all we got. Um, and the QR code, which says download the user manual. So uh, probably need to give that a go. Um, so okay, let's um, let's probe around and see what we can find in this wonderful beastie. First, well, this is curious too. There's some pads on here that say US, US art. Um, TRG, transmit, receive, ground. Mm. Okay, so um, I wonder if we got any serial. Whoa, that, I feel that right in my hand. That thing's getting warm. I don't see anything. Doesn't mean there is nothing, but maybe it has a very basic command interpreter or something like that. Maybe it can be programmed to squirt out what it's, um, good grief, that's getting hot. Holy crap. All right, so, um, what is the frequency of this, uh, oscillator here? This is probably its output. 13 megahertz on the nose. So, okie dokie. Um, looking like we got a pick. Pick 16, pick 18, something like that. Um, uh, let's see here. That's my 10 megahertz in greatly amplified. Yeah, that's greatly amplified. Um, that's like three and a half volts peak to peak that thing only puts out one volt peak to peak so that that's that's amplified quite a bit um so if this is its input right here um that's ground that's no idea that looked like something Oh, there we go. That's its output. That's its divider output right there. 156.250 kilohertz on the nose. Um, nice square wave. So we're taking our signal in. We're amplifying it. This pre-square, pre-scaler, good grief, 
is taking it, squaring it up. Um, what the multiplexer is for beats me. Um, maybe it's taking multiple samples, um, which would be quite clever. Um, I had never thought about that. Uh, generally, you're going to do something with a frequency counter, you're just going to buy one. Um, you know, I did that quick and dirty one over there, which was pretty accurate. Um, but, you know, this is taking it to another level, probably. So 156.250 kilohertz. Let's consult a calculator. What is that? Approximately 60? Divide by 60? Uh, 156.0. Nope. No, it's just a 250. Um, we got to times that by 60. No, that's not it. 64? Yeah, it's 64. Okay, so this guy is dividing by 64. Ouch. That's hot. Great day. Hello. <laughs> I think we're. <laughs> uh, uh, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to last long. That's not going to last long. Yeah, that's. That's bloody hot, man. Um, <laughs> all right, so um, there you have it our cheap Chinese frequency counter with the really hot posts and the really hot yeah it's making the whole the whole side of it's like hot this there's not enough there's not enough heat sinking in here for this I see some via stitching here to, to get the heat to draw it to the other side and you get these tack switches here you know we got a big copper pad here but it's cut off right here with this diode um, this just you know, the layout of this just doesn't look that great as far as this power supply. I mean, yeah, they tried to make it small, but, you know, I'm only giving this thing eight blasted volts. Um, and we got this connector here, and, you know, underneath it is, you know, obviously a ground plane. Um, yeah, I don't... Nah, it's not very bright, guys. It's not very bright. There's just not enough area for it to dissipate any real heat. You know, 250 milliamps uh, on a D-pack, you know, that's a bunch. You know, that's a bunch. Especially when you just don't have the area for it. I think it would work if you had the area. You know, I mean, this is a, actually not a... This is like one of the big D-packs. Um, and the reason I say that is because... This one used a 7805 D-pack that, that fit right here, and that's what this via stitching is all the way through. But the, the, the pad on the back of this, you know, there's a big heat sinking area back here, you know. <clears throat> but this doesn't have any area. Um, it's only got like three quarters of the back here, and you know, just this little piece above from the tack switches out and, and these posts, not even this post, well, through this side, yes, but through this side, it's cut off. This side, the posts are definitely being part of the heat sink, and that's probably why it didn't die. But 60 some odd uh, C is hot, really hot. Um, you know, these are, you know, this is, this is, this is probably, this is, this is your 200 milliamps right here alone. You know, this and, and, and this, is your, that, that's, that's your power consumption. This is probably not a good, a good design. I don't think this will last very long. Uh, what I would do is, it seems like it's something worthy of putting in a radio. Um, especially if you can program offsets. I gotta go get the manual and, and, and the, and see what you what the, what you could do. Go maybe look at the eBay listing. Maybe there's just a quick and dirty way to get the manual instead of having to figure out what work out this QR code business. Um, but um, yeah, we got buttons. So it's clearly must be able to program something, offsets, what have you. Um, 
but no, it wouldn't. There's no way to input to tell it that you're on, um, uh, you know, on an upper or lower sideband. So that wouldn't work. Um, but for an AM radio, if you wanted an eight-digit counter, it would work. But you're certainly gonna have to pull this 7805 off, and you're gonna have to heat sink that some other way. So you're gonna have to mod this. But for ten bucks, um, I don't think you can go wrong. They didn't even cut the the pins on these displays they just they didn't shave them they just left them there um so that's you know sort of a poor uh attention to detail there that's just a failure that's just a failure um so anywho um not sure if i got a problem there eight volts getting that hot 200 milliamps eh i don't know um a d-pack uh, I don't know. That's sketchy. I mean, that's that's sketchy. Um, I have to crunch the numbers, but um, it may. It the thing is, is it might work barely. Maybe if this was mounted in something, and, and that was what. I have no idea. I don't know what was going through their mind. I would not have done that. But um, anyway, uh, that can be modded. Incidentally, now that I think about it, um, with a, a Murata or a Recon Power. Um, uh, one of those little block, um, um, what do they call those? It's a, it's a little, I've got a bunch of them around here, a little square, um, uh, bloody hell. Um, one of these things. They're little, um, uh, switching regulators. Um, you put a switching regulator, it fit right in there. You just retrofit it and fit the switching regulator in there and you won't have any problems. Uh, those do 500 milliamps. Um, and easy and they'll widen the voltage range because that's the problem with this you can't give this much voltage the higher the voltage the worse the problem so um you know you're going to have to keep this thing about as low as you can go without having it drop out which is probably going to be around seven volts um let's test that theory um see how low i can get it um before it will just conk out so Let's power it back up. Oh, I unplugged it at the power supply. So let's cog this up and let's see when we lose it. You can see it's starting to dim. And that's at... So that microcontroller will probably run... Um, down to a point and so will the count uh, so will the, the the driver that's six um six volts right there 6.6 6 volts um it starts dropping out at around seven and a half uh from the looks of it so that's a probably about right um the point where it just can't it's not really doing the business anymore and it's just letting it go by so anyway um there you have it one uh eight digit chinese frequency counter with power supply failure or power supply soon to be failed <laughs> catch you next time